You are listening and watching to a very special podcast. We're continuing more on Phenomena of Serendipity 2 of Chloe's point of view. Let me tell you, things are going to get pretty intense. Looks like everyone got there on time. Chloe was seen wearing some sort of outfit. Black tights and a black dress all zipped up. She still had her blonde hair and she had zipped up ankle boots. Sorry, I'm late. <laughs> I just had to, like, dress something differently, if you know what I mean. Um, are you okay, Chloe? You looked a little ticked off. Oh, yeah, I'm pretty ticked, all right. <sighs> Let's just get this stupid thing over with. Chloe muttered. She glared over at Barnaby, who looked back at her with a glance of suspiciousness. Then Barrera called out, Hey guys, come on! What's the hold up, bunny? Let's go! Kotetsu said. Yeah, I'm coming. Barnaby said. But he had to glare one more time at Chloe, but Chloe glared right back. The four of them waited for the judge to come. <sighs> Where is this guy? Oh, man, I am so nervous. Burra said, Hey, hey, take it easy. It's okay. You must be busy with something. You can always come back later. Kotetsu said, Yeah, you're right, but uh, I'm so anxious. However, as if speak of the devil, some guy with white hair and a ponytail, a messy kind with a few hair strains on the sides. This was none other than Judge Yuri Petrov. While inside, Chloe and Barrera began to explain to the judge about these creatures that have been roaming around, and Yuri Petrov did notice of this strange activity going on. However, they were all interrupted by a knock on the door, and a young lady with some sort of chestnut red hair. She wore cat glasses, which they were cat looking no cat ears but it was like rimmed and they were black and they looked pretty damn sexy she wore a white button shirt that was rolled up she wore a long black leather skirt that reached her knees and it showed off how good her legs looked and she wore black high heels and the hair was up in a high bun and she had silvery gray eyes. <clears throat> I'm sorry for the interruption, uh, Your Honor, but I brought the papers as promised, the woman said. And also here. There was a cup of beverage. The judge took it. Thank you, he said. The woman nodded. Then she glanced at the others. Um, do you people need any refreshments yourselves? Can I get you anything? She said. No, it's fine, Burr said. We're good, Chloe said. Honest, but, uh, thanks anyway. Kotetsu said. Yes, thank you, said Barnaby. He exchanged a weird look 
at the woman, but the woman left with a huff. Ferrer had to pardon herself to use the ladies' room and offer Chloe to explain more. However, Chloe stopped her and whispered, I don't know much about this stuff. You're good at this than me. Come on, you know this too. You're smart as well. I know you can do this, Ferrer whispered. Chloe then rolled her eyes. Fine, I'll do it, she whispered back. While Brer was gone, she had to explain more about the different types of monsters. By the time she was done finishing up with the last one, which was Transfigurations, Brer returned. Now the judge was getting pretty intrigued with this. He nodded and listened, and he knew exactly. Once the others began discussing about the plans on finding Luna and also taking down these beasts, once the meeting was over, everyone departed. However, Chloe noted that during that whole meeting, she noticed that Barnaby was giving her weird looks, suspicious looking looks. Chloe made it look like she was going back to her hotel, but then she turned the corner, and then she looked back, and she didn't see anyone. Then she decided to go to Barnaby's place before he even got back. Once she got into his house sneakily, using some sort of hairpin to open the door, once inside, she looked around. Wow. So this is his apartment condo. And I gotta say, this guy's got pretty good taste. And a really nice view. But she had to focus. So she began rummaging around. Then she discovered a picture of a young boy and two of his parents. But... The picture frame looked a little cracked. Wait, could this be Barnaby's parents? She looked over at the photo, but in the reflection of the picture frame, someone was behind. Thankfully, it wasn't Barnaby, but it was an infestation. It attacked Chloe, and Chloe did her best to fight off, but the infestation was a lot more stealthier and knocked her out. The creature was about to finish the job when all of a sudden it was taken out from behind. It was Barnaby. He just got home. He glanced down at the unconscious Chloe and it looked as if, seeing if things were about to get really more intense now that he knew the truth. Then he glanced down at the monster that he broke its neck and killed. Stupid beast, he muttered, shoving it out. Then he shut the door. It took him a while to look over at Chloe. Then he said, well, Nix, you finally found out where I live. That's good to know, isn't it? He said. There was some intensity in his green eyes. Something magnificent. Wow, sorry, I got, I got lost in the whole story. Whoa, boy. Pretty different, huh? Well, anyways, um, thank you for listening and watching. See you next time. I'm Captain Donovan, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.